I'm gonna show you how to become a highly paid and valued graphic designer, even if you're young and don't have a ton of experience. This is my number one question that I'm asked by designers in my community and on YouTube here. So I'm gonna answer that in this video. As a business owner that started at 17 years old with a baby face, I had a serious baby face. I know the struggles of what it's like to be a young designer. So today I'm gonna to share with you some advice on how I overcame these challenges and how I can give you some advice to overcome these in your own life, in your own business, in your own, your own career, and to take advantage of this. So Mark Hu and our group asked, how can I land those big clients willing to give me a shot and not play me for a fool? There's a term in South Africa, I guess, called Kasi hustlers or township hustlers. And these dudes want the services and have approached me many times, but they aren't willing to pay me what I'm worth. And with me being a young, fresh designer, and in quotes, he put dumbass in the post, which is a limiting belief and self-talk and things like there. But I have bitten into it and have done a few jobs almost for peanuts. So there's a lot to this question and the way he worded this question and how he spoke about himself and what his expectations are. So I wanna jump into this and answer this question in detail and get right into it. All right, the first thing is your expectations. The first thing you need to know is you need to set realistic expectations for yourself and for others. If you don't have an amazing portfolio, you don't have a Google business profile with lots of reviews, if you don't have a list of references and you don't have a strong business background, then you gotta be honest with yourself. Most graphic designers that I've met think that they should be making amazing money because they went and spent money and got a graphic design degree or they have amazing artwork. If no one knows you, if no one trusts you, if you haven't built that know, like, and trust factor, you can't expect to charge the same rates as your competitors, people that have been in the industry for like me for five, 10, and 15 years. It's just not realistic yet. The key word being yet. This is why I'm doing what I do for a living and why I wanna share this knowledge with you guys, this real truth, so that you can learn as quickly as possible and not make the same mistakes that I did. These guys may be hustlers, but you make the decision whether you want to open that door and accept the work that you believe is below your value and your worth. Just from what you described in this post, it sounds like these guys you're, you're talking about are called what I call pond clients, the small fish. They also are called bottom feeders, in my opinion, the ones that move from one designer to the next, just looking to get the next deal. It's really important that you recognize and qualify these people by asking them the right questions in advance. What's your budget? Have you worked with any designers before? There's a lot of questions you ask. Some of my best clients were cheap clients that sent me more business than I even know what to do with. A really good example of this was my first mentor, Larry. He paid me $30 to design a flyer when I was just starting out for his nightclub. And then in less than a year, I had generated over six figures in income from all the other business that he had referred me to based on that discount. So in the long run, it was really worth it. These hustlers may be hardworking people that are connectors like Larry was that have a massive network of people and they're just used to getting really good deals and they're just not gonna pay top dollar. They don't need to because they've built for maybe a month or year or many years, they've built a strong network and they just really don't need to pay those top end prices and they're used to getting good deals. But if you help them out and do them a favor, they can connect you to all the rest of their customers. This is something you wanna keep in mind. So before I get to the best part of this, I have a question for you. Have you ever been treated differently or been taken advantage of for being young? I know what this is like, and I wanna know what you think. If this has happened to you, tell me about it down in the comments. Let me know, I would love to hear from you. The next piece to this is authority. I want you to start positioning yourself as an expert and building social currency. You're probably wondering what is social currency? Social currency is getting reviews, getting video testimonials, getting reference letters. These things are like rocket fuel for your growth in the very beginning of your business. These are things that you really have to focus on getting and incorporating into your sales and your marketing process. If you're a new designer, the chances are that you have extremely low overhead like I did. I didn't really have any low overhead when I started. So you are going to be able to have a unique ability, unlike me nowadays, where I have a huge overhead to offer really competitive pricing in the beginning. One of my mentors taught me a long time ago that it's harder to get your first sale than it is the second, third, and fourth, and so on. So focus on just getting that first deal, blowing them out of the water, earning their trust, and giving them an experience that they'll actually talk about. Give them a story to tell their friends, their family, their colleagues. Once you've done that, then you can upsell them on higher ticket design services and other stuff like reoccurring revenue, things that they're gonna be buying from you on a regular basis. One more thing I'll mention as I have in other videos is to create a unique design package with a flat rate. 
not based on hourly rates. Hourly rates are the enemy for graphic designers. If you're still doing that, you need to stop. You need to start putting flat rates and productizing your offers. This is gonna help you actually make more money and actually build a better brand. And if you get the project done faster, you're gonna increase your profits. You'll be making more money per hour and it'll be harder to price shop you. Which leads me to my next question. Do you offer custom packages to your clients or are you still charging per hour? I wanna know down in the comments, are you charging per hour or are you doing flat rate project, productized products? I wanna know who's watching this and if you're doing that. The last piece of this is I want you to start fishing in the right bodies of water. As a designer, one of the advantages that you have is to be able to get clients from anywhere, anywhere in the world. If your market doesn't pay you enough where you're at locally in your community, whether it's South Africa or Bangladesh or India, wherever you are for your services, then market yourself somewhere that will. If you're in Africa or a low paying country that makes like less than $5 an hour, then you should be building a company brand that is reputable, right? Build a brand, not a personal brand, but a company brand and start marketing to people in the US or other parts of the world, Europe, Australia, and actually build your reputation online. You can work online as a designer. You have this freedom and flexibility that most people don't have. It's one of the things that makes graphic design and being a graphic designer so great. In America, the minimum wage is like 12 to $16 an hour, depending on where you live. So if you're living in a country that's making four or $5 an hour, you're three to four Xing your income and you're three to four Xing your rates right there. There are so many places you can find work these days from Thumbtack, Freelancer, Upwork, Guru, and Fiverr if you're really desperate but there are bigger and bigger fish swimming in these bigger ponds and lakes and oceans, as I like to say, that will pay you what you're worth. But you still have to have that credibility, you still have to have the business skills, and you have to know how to handle that business properly. If it's done well, you can build a strong reputation and build a really great business regardless of your age. It really doesn't matter. Age is just a number, how you look isn't real. You can build a reputation online without having any of that. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please drop them down below or check out our Instagraphics community on Facebook, the Instagraphics Pro Network. The link is down in the comments below. We're here to help you. We're here to support you. All you gotta do is fill out all the questions. We'll let you in and we'll welcome you with open arms. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to see you guys on the next video. And as always, keep looking up.